Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack. I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. And in this video, I'm doing a follow-up video on a video I did quite recently. It was about MIDI sequencing in AUM and why I don't want to do that. And so I'll start off by saying that what I want to do is to do looping. I want to be able to record MIDI notes and I want them to loop and I want to be able to switch tracks any way I want. And the way I want to do that is especially when I'm mixing up my iDevices with hardware synthesizers like the Uno synth or a Korg Volca uh, synthesizer or, or something else. What I want to be able to do is to keep my hands on the hardware and not really do things on the touchscreen. I know that's a bit strange since this whole channel is based upon iOS music making, but that's that's the way I want to work. And whenever I do something with, with screens and a lot of screen touching, well, it's usually me using apps like Figure or anything else that is very, very screen friendly for live performances. So what do I need? I need a MIDI looper and then I need MIDI controllers. And in that last video I did, a lot of you told me about LK by Imaginando. And so I checked it out and it's not for me. And before you lose your minds, screaming your heads off, Jacob, are you crazy? That That's a perfect app. Yeah, it can be perfect for a lot of people, but I'll show you why it's not perfect for me. Now, I want to start off by saying that, well, I want to shout out a, a, a video and a channel, and the channel name is Dylan Paris. And I watched his video on using LK together with AUM to create something that is very much akin to an Ableton-esque type of environment for MIDI looping because of the clip launching, how you make new tracks, how you record. I'm linking to that video down in the description and in the pinned comment so you can go check him out and why not subscribe to him he's only got 1500 subscribers and he does some really good content over there he even does some live performances with lk and aum this app is really good and for those of you who want that ableton ask live looping thing this app is great but not for me now the reason to why lk isn't for me is because quite simply quite frankly you cannot midi map anything in here. LK cannot map CC buttons or anything like that. No options for it. I don't want to have to go to screen and do certain things. I want to connect stuff to controllers, have everything ready, just record, select which track I want to record on, uh, tweak some knobs. And with LK, I can't do that unless I go to the screen and actually select the tracks and arm them and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, it might fit for a lot of people who want to work off the screen, then this thing is great. But for me, I need something else and I'm using Drambo. So I'll show you how to set that up. All right, so right here on the table, I've got an iPad Pro 11 inch. It's running uh, iOS 14.2, I think. And I've got the Korg Nano Control Studio and Korg Nano Key Studio. All right, so let me show you how to set this up with Drambo real quick. So we're gonna open up a MIDI channel and then we're gonna go to the input and choose an audio unit MIDI processor. We're gonna choose Drambo MIDI Effects and in here, we can find an instance with eight channels preloaded with a MIDI output. And right now it says channel one. So track one has channel one selected, track two has channel two, and so on. Very simple. And now we have full access to the sequencer inside Drambo. So next we need something that makes sound. So we're gonna open up an audio channel and open up an audio unit extension, Poison 202. That's a synthesizer, it's really good. And uh, there's presets in there made by me. Now to get the notes to be sent from Drambo to Poison 202, we need to connect them up. So we tap here and we get this window. We select Drambo and next we need to specify the channel. So we scroll down here and we can either deselect the ones we don't want it to receive MIDI from. And then we can also do this, press none and then select channel number one. So now Poison202 is receiving MIDI on channel one from Drambo and this workflow of actually pressing none and then selecting the channel. I saw that in, in Dylan Paris's video about LK and AUM. And I thought to myself, why, why don't I do that? Why do I sit there and just deselect all the channels all the time? Just pressing none and then selecting. 
Bruh. So now we can test this out by pressing play and Drambo of course syncs to AUM. So we're gonna open this up and input some notes. Alright, so next we need some way of inputting notes. Now, in uh, Dylan Paris's video, he used KB1 from Kai Aras, a MIDI plugin, uh, which is a keyboard basically. Well, as I told you, I like working with hardware controllers. So how do you do it then? So right now I have these two controllers connected to my iPad through USB. And um, what I need to do is to tell Drambo to listen to these controllers. So we go here. And now we can choose which of the controls we want. I'll choose both of them. So I'm just going to close this down. Delete this empty slot. Now that we have this, we can now record stuff. So I'll show you. We can press record there and then we can press play. And so right now it's in recording mode. So whatever I put in here, And that's how you set it up. And now you can keep doing that for whatever channels you want. Now, the reason to why I've got this thing here is because what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to not look at AM and just keep on working with my controllers. And for that, I need a way of actually switching the tracks. So I'll record on one track and then I just wanna go to track two and switch it and continue working. So why is this setup so good? And why is Drambo good for that? Well, Drambo has MIDI Learn. So if we open up Drambo and press this icon here, we can then map our controllers to Drambo. So let's go to track one and I'll press the select button right here on the Nano Control Studio. And there it's learned. Now I can go to channel two, press this one, channel three, press this one, and let's stop the MIDI learn mode. So let me remove these notes and let's go in here and add another synthesizer. And we're gonna load another instance of Poison 202. And let's go in here and choose one of my presets and just take, uh, uh, we'll do that. And so now we just need to connect this up. So we go here again and press Drambo and then go here, none. So I'm gonna choose channel two because I wanted to receive MIDI from channel two now. <coughs> this is what we have. Channel one, channel two. So I'm just gonna go into uh, Drambo first. And what I'm going to do is activate the MIDI learn, press the recording button and do this. Okay, so now I have the recording button toggled to that. You see, I can turn it on and off when I press here, which is very nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close this window down and I'm going to press recording mode and press play here. And now I'm just going to start by recording on channel one. Nice. It sounds awful, I know. Channel two. Now, if you're making music that sounds this awful, don't stop, keep going until it sounds good. Now, what's so nice about this is that I can now slide this away and I can bring my MIDI controllers up to my, to, to, to my hands like this. And now I can work seamlessly with just my controllers. And it kind of feels like I'm using this hardware version, only I'm powered by AUM so I can do whatever I want. And this is why I prefer using Drambo over LK. Jakob, all they would need to do is to implement MIDI CC learning. Yes, yes, that would definitely take care of that issue. I'm still not sure if it would be the best fit for me because I really like the way that I'm able to use Trambo, but yeah, I would definitely try out LK again 
if Imaginando implements a way for me to MIDI map my controller functions. And I need stuff like track switching and track arming, recording, arming, recording button thing. And I also need to be able to press play and stop on my controllers. So transport buttons need to be mapped. And if I could map a controller to undo stuff that I just did, that would be great too. If they do that, I'll try it out again. I'll give it a new chance. Now, I want to talk about the differences between LK and Drambo because they're not the same thing when we look at the MIDI sequencing only. First, I want to address an elephant in the room. Well, LK works like Ableton Live in that it does clip launching. And that is something that Drambo does not. So please consider that. Yes, you can do MIDI looping with Drambo, but you don't have any clip launching. Now, apart from the elephant in the room, LK and Drambo are very different. And we're just looking at the MIDI sequencing now, because if we look at Drambo, what we have is a step sequencer. It is polyphonic, so you can record more notes than one on a step. The problem is that you cannot edit those because there is no piano roll in here. However, if you look at LK, it has a full piano roll. So if you get one note just wrong, you can fix that. So that's a big thing, you know? If you need to work with piano rolls, Drambo isn't gonna work for you. Now, the next thing is to look at pattern lengths, for instance. Maybe you just want long sequences to work with. And so if we look at Drambo first, we are pretty much limited to 256 steps. Actually, you can have 320 steps, but that's if you choose to have five steps per beat, uh, yeah. The length of that actually in time depends on your BPM, of course, but 256 steps, that's a pretty long pattern, if I might say so. And if we look at LK on the other hand, well, the patterns can be as long as you want them. Look at this, I'm just adding bars. I'm just adding more and more. It can be very, very long. But when you get up to this length, it gets ridiculous. And I don't think you would be able to edit anything in here if you actually did that. Okay, so what about you? Do you need hardware controllers when you want to do sequencing inside AUM? Maybe you're the type of person who likes using stuff like LK. Maybe you want to work off screen. Maybe you need hardware controllers. Why don't you tell us down in the comment section? And before you leave, at least if you don't want to leave a comment, hit this video with a thumbs up if you found it entertaining, if you found it useful, if you learned anything from it. And if you didn't learn anything, if you didn't like it, then give me a thumbs down. Yeah, and um, if you wanna support this channel further, you have these links here on the side. And um, what else? Share the video, I think, uh, to anyone who wants to know about sequencing stuff in AUM. Maybe this could be helpful to them. So uh, that's about it. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. Have you seen the latest color options inside AUM that Jonathan put in in the latest update? So you just open up an instrument like this or an input node because you can do this only with inputs and then long press here and then choose customize uh, node color and go like this and that and check that out. That is nice.